Well, welcome everybody to another edition of Tackle Shop Live. What's up? What's up? How's everybody doing today? Scott Lockoff's here, Lane Grace. How you doing? Sam and Sam. Robert Donahue, Edward Rudnowski. How are you, buddy? Jesse McNutt. Tammy, what's happening? Mark from Mesa Lake. Sorry about the little bit of delay. Man, oh man, you know, this computer stuff. Windows decided to do an update right when I was getting ready to hit the live button. <laughs> you gotta love it. Well, I hope everybody's having a great day. I know we are. Appreciate everybody stopping in, checking us out. Welcome to another edition of Tackle Shop Live. My name is Mike Acord. This is George Acord. And we are here every Thursday night at 7 o'clock or a little after if you get a Windows update right in the middle of your setting up process. Un well. Unbelievable. Technology, right? Yeah. Guaranteed to let you down. I guarantee you. That's unbelievable. But, uh... Ray Cruz is here. James Hook, man. Danny Paust. How's everybody going? Uh, listen, we had a great um, couple of days here at the shop. And uh, we we last week, we were busy with all of our uh, classic releases, which we talked about a little bit on Thursday last week. And on, on I think it was Friday, we did a, a classic release on the... Or was that Thursday? I well, it was Friday. We did the classic. I think it was Friday. We did the St. Croix physics uh, rod launch. Yeah. And, yeah. So, we had classic week. We had a bunch of bunch of product launches. You know, obviously, the Bassmasters Classic Outdoor Expo is kind of like the public's version of iCast. Yeah. I thought it was a little weak this year. Yeah, it wasn't like super exciting. Like, you know, you know, I think it's a state of the times we live in. Yeah. You know, I mean, I thought the G Loomis GLX was spectacular. Yeah. Um, I like the physics rod, but the the well, the variety, the, the 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 you know, the mix that we got. Mm. Yeah, I mean I wasn't real happy with that. Well, that you know, the factories didn't really you know, it's, I, I think I cannot believe that they rush, 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 rush to get this done. And then they uh, flop on their face the day that they're supposed to do it. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, I think we didn't. The factory backing wasn't there 100 percent on the physics. But um, you know what I got tonight, though, hmm. at some point, hmm. I've got several more Bassmasters classic releases. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, uh, St. Croix wasn't the only one under the gun. There was a few other ones that were behind the times on their releases. And, you know, we're going to cover them tonight in our Tackle Talk segment. Oh, for sure. For sure. And also on the classic rundown, I've been in the lab hard studying the classic. Yeah, we'll get on, into all that. And we're going to do a little rundown and we're going to spin off on some discussion. What can we learn? Yeah. What can we learn? <clears throat> What can we learn, Mike? What can we learn? Yep. So thank you guys so much. Um, if you would, just take the time to like and share uh, our our uh, YouTube and Facebook while you're, while you're watching it. Share it with your friends. Let everybody know that we do this every Thursday night. That would help us out immensely. Uh, coming up, the next on our list is one of our largest events of the year um, in the – and, and it's become something that everybody looks forward to and we look forward to it. Um, and that is the Susquehanna fish and tackle summer slam mm. tournament. And, uh, 
we're getting ready to kick this thing off. We're coming into April here, and it's going to be the kickoff. The SummerSlam tournament has been going on for 15 years or so, um, and every year it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And, and it was uh, it was an idea that George and I and Patrick Latham, our Shimano rep, spawned together and, um, to try to get people into fishing tournaments uh, that normally wouldn't fish tournaments, you know, and that's the whole thing, you know, um, a lot of, a lot of us guys, we, we think that we go to fish some of these tournaments. We feel like we're donators that we're just paying money. And well, speak for yourself, Mike. <laughs> well, I do. I feel like I go to some I mean, of these tournaments and I feel like a donator, like I'm fishing one next, next week and not going to get any practice, not going to get any time there. So I feel like I'm just going down and donating, you know, showing up and being now, a donator. What I'm hearing is you just laid out three big excuses. No, 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 no. I, I you know, I, I, uh, I'm just being real. <laughs> I'm just saying the way yeah. I'm, pick, I'm but picking anyway, it up. I'm picking it up. Yeah. So anyway, our tournament is really cool because the entry fee is a purchase of either Shimano, G Loomis, Jackal, or Power Pro, those four companies. And you spend $250 per boat. So you can split it with your partner, 250 bucks or more. There's a lot of guys that buy more. And that enters you into the tournament. So essentially, you can go down, fish the tournament, which is on the upper bay out of Anchor Marine. Chesapeake um, Bay. Chesapeake Bay, the, up, the upper Chesapeake Bay. And we're going out of Anchor Marine on May the 19th, uh, which is going to be a spectacular time of year. Yeah, we should call it the Spring Slam. Well, it was always in the summer, and then we kept moving it back and moving it back. And moving well, originally, it, back. it was the Fall Bash. It was a fall bash. That's right. When we first started, it was, it was the, the fall bash. It was the fall bash. That's what we were doing on the river. And then was, we went to the summer slam. Yeah. And then we well, went to, we went. To, we did the fall bash for two years on the river, and the second year we just discovered that um, there's not enough parking there. You know, when we well, took in that the year they, they stopped tournament tournaments. Uh we might have had another year before the uh, closure. The Pennsylvania uh, Fish Commission and all their infinite wisdom closed the river but yeah. I, I, I i i'm just saying we we ran out of parking spots yeah, we did it but real quick the summer slam i just want to say this if you've if okay if you're an experienced tournament angler you've already been there you've already done that you know this is a pro level tournament okay we have one of the best team trails in the region doing our weigh-in for us we have the Chester County Bassmasters team yeah that comes in and does our weigh in and it's they're basically equal to Bassmaster when it comes to weigh ins yeah they do a fantastic I mean, job minus Ray Scott but <laughs> they're equal to the Bassmaster but we have that going for us okay yeah. we have one of the best Big fish, big fish, bass fisheries. Try saying that three times fast. <laughs> On the Mid Atlantic region, okay. I'll put it up against anything out there. I know some of you're going to be chirping about Falls Lake and and the Golden Triangle in Raleigh Durham area, and you have a right to say so. But this is a it's big bass factory. This is a this is a venue that that. You can run 25, 30 miles one way and bring back a 25-pound bag. Okay, so, you know, it's it's an awesome fishery. We're on it. This year, we're actually going to have to cap the entries. We have, we have raised up to new levels in our game here. <laughs> and, again, their parking lot only holds so many boats. Okay, so we talked with the owners of the marina and you know they're fantastic anchor marine for those of you who don't know where it's at is in the town of northeast maryland which is a cool little town mm -hmm. uh you got your lodging there you got some nice you know restaurants and eateries um they have an awesome marina there but they can only park 200 boats and that's taken into account the back parking lot yeah so we are going to cap it at 200 boats this year and make no mistake about it. We will have 200 boats. So for sure, um, start your plans. The buy-in is going to start 
What? Uh, April the 19th. Yeah. So um, the way it works is we work with uh, with uh, Shimano um, very closely, and, and they wanted to put the buy-in on a 30-day window so they can control – and understand everything that's that's moving for them and for their logistics um and so it's going to go from april the 19th to may the 19th you can buy in for the tournament the 250 dollars and like george said we're capping it at 200 boats so you know we have to don't dilly dally around they will fill up um there's many ways of doing it you can do it online uh you can buy your stuff online and then fill out an application and get an application to us uh, you can come in the shop and do it here in the shop and uh, you can do that um, through the shop here, but it's, it is, um, it's going to be easy. We'll help you walk your way through it. If you never fished tournaments before, this is what it's all about. It's about you being able to come down to the tournament, go fishing, maybe have a great day. Like, a, like some of our newbies have done in the past. They've, they've cash checks uh, or you might just you know, not catch anything. And guess what? Everybody wins. You win, you win the tackle that you purchased. You take that stuff home and you keep it. You have it forever. And uh, that's how everybody's a winner at our Susquehanna Fishing Tackle SummerSlam tournament. So uh, just an announcement. We're getting this thing kicked off. We're getting all fired up about it. And uh, I want you guys to be the first ones to know about it so that you guys can uh, jump on board real quick because you listen to Tackle Shop Live and you guys deserve it. You you can jump on board quick and get in so you're not pushed out. Okay, um, let's get this show going. This is a section uh, that we love to talk about, and that is Tackle Talk. <laughs> We are a tackle shop, and we love tackle, and this is our great section that we call Tackle Talk. And, George, what do you got for us? What's new? What's hot? What's happening in the world of tackle? You know, I just feel like I have, like, I like I have, like, a, a I need medication or something because I'm all over the place tonight. Let me interrupt one second. Go ahead. You interrupt. Well, I didn't say that cameraman Nick got caught up at work and he can't be here, so I'm going to be. Well, you actually did say that. I did say that at the beginning. Of oh, the show. okay. So I'm going to be cameramaning. So if you see me bump, bumping in and out, I don't mean to any disrespect, but I'm going to be running the camera. So watch for the expertise. Why don't you get on that camera? Because I need a close up on this next shot. Because we're about to get real small. I'm going to show you guys the hottest jig head in the bass fishing universe right now. This jig head has, has become the deal in the forward-facing world. And it's called the Range Roller. Nice focus job there, cameraman Mike. So this is a pretty small model here. And actually, it's stamped on the head, Mike. Yeah. Now, check this out. This, this one here. I don't even know how they stamped this on here. Three sixty fourths of an ounce with a one o hook. Okay, so on this one you'll notice that the keeper. I'm sorry for moving that mic. The keeper is a little wire keeper, so when you lock her in, she's going to be locked in. Okay. Of course, it's made by owner, so we have an owner hook, round bend. Look at a gap on that mic. For a one -aught. Um, and you'll notice for hover for hover rigging, hover strolling, you know, you need a 90 degree eye, right? So we have the 90 degree eye. We have the reason it gets its name roller is this head shape creates a rolling, rocking movement on a, you know, whether you're twitching it or winding it, you know, usually you're just twitching it and it's just t -t 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 rocking like that. It doesn't make that sound now. Um, so basically we're talking a number two hook, a one Oh hook 
and a 3 0 hook. And what was interesting about this jig head is last year, um, at ICAST, owner had, you know, a, a, a very modest amount of offerings. And one of the offerings was this jig head. And the the hover strolling technique was was gaining popularity here. It was already light years ahead of us in the Japan. And they're like, yeah, this this head, blah, 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 blah. And we're like, um, okay. So here we are, caught up with the times. 729. You're gonna have a four pack or a five pack, depending on size. And uh yeah, it's called the range roller. The hottest jig head in the hover strolling technique currently. Um, uh, real good stuff. So, you know, the next thing I want to talk to you all about is some reels. We have some Bassmasters Classic releases that, you know, we really didn't have the inventory on to talk about last week. Um, so we're going to talk about them this week. First, we're going to start off with the new SLX. Okay, basically very similar to the old SLX. Now, this is only in the 70 size. Okay, and what's important to understand here when you're doing your, like, looking at this and you're saying, wait a minute, the 70 used to be called the MGL because it had the MGL spool. So the new A version has the MGL 3 spool, which is actually Shimano's lightest spool. And light, as we've explained hundreds of times in the past, is good. Startup inertia, casting performance, both on the high end and the low end. Outstanding reel for skipping. Okay, the 70 SLX and the 70 Corrado have been long known as fantastic skipping reels, but so much more. You know, they have just enough line capacity as a pitching and flipping reel. They handle lightweight stuff well because of the MGL3 spool. They have an aluminum side plate, an aluminum body, a cross carbon drag. Quality piece of equipment at $149.99. Some of the stats that you're very important to you would be like there's two gear ratios. So there's a 7-2, which is taking up 28 inches of line per crank. Okay. There is an 8-2, which is taking up 32 inches of line per crank. So remember, when we talk about these smaller spools, we need to increase the RPM, so to speak, the revolutions, to get the inches per crank back up. That's why there's nothing slower than a 7.2, right? Uh, no need for it on a reel like this. Um, very light. Uh, what, what do we got? We got uh, 6.9 ounces. Very light. Very feels great in the hand. Um, you know, the centrifugal braking system that Shimano's famous for, the, you know, the variable, infinite variable brake system, right? What's nice about it is, is your wear surface, your rubbing surface right there is adjustable from the outside of the reel. So I can, I can, I like to set this reel up with two brakes on two brakes off, and then I can move my braking surface in or out quickly right here. I can super fine-tune this. Phenomenal skipping reel. Skips a jig like no other. Um, great drag. You're, de you're developing, um, what do we got here? 12 pounds of drag. Um... Let me see. Four ball bearings, one roller bearing, and yeah, one forty nine ninety nine. Terrific price point. SLX seventy A. Brand new. 
currently only available in right hand. Uh, left hands soon to follow. All right. What do you think, Mike? You're digging that, aren't you? Mike's behind the camera. That's why his uh, voice is uh, muffled. Uh, okay, so we're going to go up to pay scale here, Mike. We're going to jump up to pay scale. We're going to go into some higher-end reels. Love that, too. I mean, you know, it's just it is what it is. We don't control the releases. We just talk about them. So next up is the return of the Pixie. So back in the day, Daiwa had a finesse bait casting reel called the Pixie. Long before we had the terminology of BFS. Well, this is the new Pixie, actually called the PX. Um, 70 size BFS reel. And of course, it's dressed up with all the modern features that you would expect in a high performance BFS reel. We have a very lightweight aluminum spool. We have a very high quality aluminum drive gear. Um, we have six bearings, two of which are corrosion resistant. We use very little braking, so we have what's called the zero adjust. So once we set it, it's very stiff. It's going to kind of stay there for us because we're using very little braking and we're doing a ton with the magnet, okay? We can cast very light little lures on this. Um, some stats. 8.6 to 1 gear ratio. 29.7 inches per crank. Give you a little side view there. Okay. There's your handle side. They're showing you your zero adjust. The reason they call it zero adjust is it's it's recessed. It's hard to turn. The reason it's hard to turn is you want to back it off until your spool just starts to move left and right, and then you want to tighten it up until you take that slack out. You want very little braking here going to do everything here awesome system um 5.6 ounces which you would expect on a lightweight reel right a small reel 7.7 .7 pounds of drag kind of an irrelevant number um this is a light line reel okay and you know it's it's not inexpensive it's 349.99 Right, it's got the ultimate tournament drag system, so it's a very smooth. There's no sticking, there's no chattering. Palm small, comfortable. Put this on a little BFS rod, you're in business. That's called the PX BF70, the Pixie, as it is affectionately known. So last what what pound, what pound test is that real set up for? Um, you're gonna be throwing primarily your lighter tests on there. So you're gonna throw six and eight fluoro. You're gonna throw you know six to ten braid. Um, you know it's a it's a it's a it's a finesse BFS reel. So, I mean, the capacity on it is, uh, let's see what we got here. I don't think I have that here. But the capacity is slight. Okay, the capacity is small. So, yeah, uh, it's enough for light line. It's, I mean, BFS, you're not going to use heavy line. If you're using heavy line, you're buying the wrong reel. This is light, light tackle, light gear, light spool, light line. The ability to cast light baits, stuff that you would do on a spinning reel, right? So, yeah. The drag, you know, 7.7 is plenty of drag. The line capacity doesn't really matter because you're it's more than you can use. Uh, that's why they keep those spools so shallow. Um, now, they do make smaller reels 
with bigger capacities, right? So we looked at the SLX 70A. You know, that's a small 70 profile reel, but with a a fuller capacity. I mean, the 70A is uh, 70 yards of um, 14 mono or fluorocarbon, right? Which for pitching and flipping, if you even if you go to 20, you know, that's that's what it's made for. Or if you go on the light side of things, plenty of line. Uh, well, another 70 size reel. And this one here is going to rock your billfold a little bit. This is the new 70 Metanium DC. This is a serious piece of work right here. 6.2 ounces. Okay. Magnesium frame. That's why it's so light. MGL3 spool. Okay. The gearing is micro module. You know, it's machined. It is precision. It is so smooth. You feel absolutely nothing. There's no feeling there. Right? Um, 10 bearings, one roller, every one of them anti-rust. This is a serious piece of equipment. 7.1 and 8.1 gear ratios available, right hand and left. 105 yards of 10. So you're going to be, what, uh, 85 yards of 12. You're going to be 70 yards of 14. So it's, you know, it's right there in a 70 size reel profile. But what's interesting about this reel is it's a little bit of a different DC mechanism than the Corrado that we're all used to or the SLX that we're all used to. This is IDC5. And what's interesting about this, I'm going to try to get in close here. And you'll notice there's two dials. So we have this inner dial here. It has three letters on it, right? So one letter is for fluorocarbon. One letter is for monofilament. And one letter is for braid. So you will first select your line type. Then on this outer setting here, you have a sliding indicator. That is the amount of braking that you're selecting for that line type. So it's a it's a very advanced form of DC. Um, it's incredible. I'm just going to tell you that right now. And it is beautiful. It is so smooth. Um, again, DC, we use, we use virtually zero braking here. So we're going to back this off, right? We're going to back this off. We're going to pick up a little bit of spool movement. We're going to tighten it up until that goes away, and we're done with this. We're going to do everything else here. We're going to choose our line type. We're going to choose our level of braking. And, you know, not going to sugarcoat it, but it's $499.99 for the Shimano Metanium DC70. The newest, the newest DC reel in the Shimano lineup. Beautiful. Right? Um, anything now, you know, some of these reels require, you know, they require some, 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 you, you, you know, you're going to have some questions. You're going to need some, some one on one answers. You know, feel free to pick up the phone, call, feel free to stop by. I mean, we can break these reels down to the nth degree with you, okay? Because that's just what we do. We, 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 we go to the level that you're looking for. Um, so the last reel I want to break down for you is a loose spinning reel. It's called the custom light SS. 
And SS stands for shallow spool. So you'll notice this spool is a very shallow spool, okay? Um, 90 yards of 8-pound fluorocarbon. Whereas a typical reel of this size would hold like 180 to 200. Okay? So about half the line of a typical reel. What's really nice about this is your line is being wrapped in a larger diameter coil starting from the base because you're not going down so small. So it's it's if you're fluorocarbon guy, it's more relaxed. If you're a braid guy, you 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 need virtually no backing. Now, you know, they it is sprayed ready. You can tie right to the spool. We're a little old school here at SFT. We like to put a little layer of backing on, just a couple wraps. That's just how we feel about it. But either way is fantastic. Um, it's based on the custom light spinning reel. It's, I'll tell you, it's a nice reel. It's got a great feel. Um, it's got a beautiful bail wire. It's got, it's light. It's 6.2 ounces. Looks good. Um, as, as we said, 90 yards of eight, right? 6.7 ounces, 11 bearings. I mean, it's a nice reel. It's got an anti reverse on it, so you can back reel, which, you know, is going away on a lot of reels. So, yeah, we wanted to, we wanted to highlight that as well on our little reel tour tonight. The Lose Custom Light SS. Um, so, all those reels... And the range rollers are all available on sfttackle.com. They're all available in the shop. Now, the next couple items I'm going to show you are not currently up on sfttackle.com. And the first item I'm going to show you might not ever be up on sfttackle.com because I don't know about the availability on this thing. This is very scarce availability. This is crazy stuff this is a wacky rig bait this is a possible drop shot bait or i don't know if wacky rigs the right term you know i'm gonna rig it on a nico hook you know fish it like it was wacky but it's a little wacky it's called the q bomb and it's from G-Crack. It's the I'm a Kamushi Q-Bomb. Okay. And this thing's, this thing's way different. I mean, way different, right? Um, four in a pack. 1029 a pack. And I think there's four colors. Crazy stuff. And it has the SAF material, so you, you're getting that scent. Um, yeah, it's a pretty serious bait. We have we have the natural crawl. Okay, you got like a watermelon red with a, I don't even know what color body that is. Scuppernong. You have a Scuppernong, which is the same body with a Scuppernong skirting. You have a weed special, which is like a cross between watermelon and green pumpkin or more watermelony. And, of course, you have green pumpkin. You have to have clean. And this one's called clear green pumpkin. The cue ball from G-Crack. Uber limited. Not on the website. If you want them, you need to call or stop by. Um, we recently just received them, and today we had some time to process them. What in the hell is that thing? 
it's a I mean, I, you know, the whole the whole thing that I know of last year that I first saw it was it was called a dice or something. Mm -hmm. or was that yeah, it's that same concept. Yeah. Um, you know, it's it's a weightless, you know, slow fall, weightless bait. And obviously it's really well situated to the spring season when fish are up shallow bedding, if you will. Um, it's also well suited to like the summer months where you're, where you're letting that slip down underneath a boat dock or what have you. It's different. It's different. Um, that's crazy. Man. Again, you know, it's another, you know, Japanese type technique, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's what I was kind of, you know, for us, it's like, we look at it like we're cr like, it's like, it's crazy, but I know with that, Not really, I know with that dice last, last year, it, it, you know, guys, uh, who brought that? Who was talking about that, George? That it kind of got popular. What was the pro that was using that? Was that that was that was two and three years ago. What was it? There was a couple pros using it. Yeah, I thought it was last year that guy was throwing that thing and uh, Taco Ito maybe One beats me. Guys. Beats yeah. me. It well, was, it was. It's been around for a little while. Yeah, I think it's something that's. I don't even know what category you put that thing in. Like I said, it's a slow floating, weightless bait. Yeah, maybe maybe they're gonna come up with their own category or something. Yeah, like weightless weightless fishing. Yeah, weightless baits fishing something weightless. Wouldn't call it a creature. Somebody said somebody said bug. Somebody said bug well, category. Yeah, you can also drop shot it. Yeah. You know, you could put you could put some weight on if you'd like, but whatever. That's yeah. what you got. That's crazy, man. That's that that freaky when you look at it we were all like loving 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 that bait like the whole idea of it um so i don't know we'll see we'll see where that whole that whole category goes Cra yeah i mean it's crab been, on the bay i mean it's been it's been it's this is nothing new okay this is what couple three years now but this is their version of it you know that slow fall just in your face spawning bed torture bait your 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 summer dock yeah that, dock, that's what know? i'm talking about like like shallow what would water it, yeah like those kind of ideas is what i'm trying to give our cut our our uh listeners here like an idea of what the hell to do with this thing that's what they're doing with yeah it. suspended fish suspended fish yep. spawning fish yep bed fishing different something different Cool. I'm just, I'm not really, that's not my gig. I'm just pointing it out. Like George said, super limited. We have some here. You can call the shop um, tomorrow and get some if you want. I know they're not going to last long. They're, they're going to, we, the, you know, they're very, very limited. So, uh, but again, because you're watching Tackle Shop Live, you get a shot at it. So um, give us a call tomorrow, first thing, and you can snatch up a couple if you want to try this spider bomb, I want to call it. Somebody said that. Cube, no, it's the Q-bomb. 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 G-crack. -crack. I'm, a, I'm a Kamushi. I'm a Kamushi. Q-bomb. That's, that's pretty awesome. Yeah. Well, they have an I, they have a I'm a Kamushi sort of a Senko-like bait with that skirting in it. That's where the I'm a Kamushi comes from. They have that in like numerous sizes and weights because it's a very popular, although closet technique. Uh, so the last thing I have for you is a color. And I apologize. This is also not yet on our website. We've just been overloaded here lately and we are playing catch up ball, but we didn't want to keep you waiting. We have a new color in Reaction Innovations, which, you know, if you follow this show, you know we are some Reaction Innovations connoisseurs, right? Connoisseurs. So this is Electric Shad, and it's only available in the Little Dipper. So we have a very light, violet, clear, milky, clear belly. 
with that almost translucent root beer back, that real fine purple fleck in it, electric electric fleck. This thing is bad to the freaking bone. And it is available in the shiver shot. And we're going to show you the shiver shot here on the on the Dirty Jigs uh, Tactical Bass Mini Underspin. I mean, that's a bad boy right there. I'm just telling you that right now. Um, <laughs> this is the bomb. I mean, this is it. This is like when it comes to banging fish out, clear water, these baits rock. The Little Dipper is crazy. Okay. Um, check this out. Let's take a shiver shot. Let's take our little range roller. And what I like to do is kind of kind of hold that bait up there so I can kind of see where I want to bring my hook out. And I want a nice straight rigging. Nice and straight. Take your time. And then you got that killer wire keeper. Oh, man. I mean, come on. Range roller head, shiver shot. All you forward-facing guys out there. I mean, this is the deal. Yeah. That's all I'm laying on you tonight because... I know your heads are about ready to explode, right? Next week, we do it again. Maybe not quite this in-depth. I mean, this was a little bit involved, but you know what? We were having fun, and we're pretty sure you were too. Um, So that's going to be, you know, Tackle Talk tonight. And... I'm yeah. A, I'm real excited about the col that, that new color in uh, Reaction Innovation. I, um. Um, it's going to be a good clear water color. Uh, you know, it's just, it's just a perfect color. You know, we see it, we see it in other baits kind of similar to that has a little bit of that, uh, violet, uh, metal flake in there. So <clears throat> just an awesome, awesome color. So we were really excited when we got it and they are available right now. Um, not on the website. Unfortunately, we are way behind and they are not. On the website, you will have to call. I know it's a freaking pain, but that's the best we can do. Or you can come in. Yeah, Reaction Innovations coming out with another great color again. We love them, and uh, going to catch a ton of fish. We're going to be talking about that one a lot this summer for sure. Yeah, it's good stuff. All right. Well, we had a great big old uh, tournament last weekend, and we're going to bust that down a little bit. This is what we call tournament talk. Well, it was a fun tournament to watch. Well, you know, with the with the uh, overreaction to forward facing sonar, yeah, that's going on in the world. You know, yeah, great talking point. You know, really, really good for stirring up the pot. You know, just mentioned forward facing sonar and yeah, they had people just lose their minds. They had guys that were doing it. They had, you know, uh, you, you know, played a pretty big role in it, but there was the shallow guys fishing. There was all kinds of cool stuff going on. It's fun to watch. What I found interesting was, you know, we, we've been talking about tournaments all year and it's been Demiki rig, hover rig, drop shot, Nico. None of that played at the Bassmasters Classic in the top 25. Mm -hmm. Forward-facing sonar was useful to see a fish's reaction for these anglers in brush because there was so many fish in the lake that were not bass. Yeah. The lake 
is absolutely overrun with drum, catfish, carp, non-game fish species that the forward-facing typical fish hunting technique was irrelevant. Where it did come into play is lining up on a brush pile, working a bait past a brush pile, and seeing the reaction of a fish. Okay? Um, and that's what happened. And that's why, for example, all those techniques that we've been wearing out, that we've been getting bored talking about, didn't play. Mm -hmm. Minnow on a jig head. Demiki, drop shot. Irrelevant. What did play? And how does that help us? Yeah. Well. Jerk bait. Yeah, I mean, jerk bait. So, I mean, it was one on a vision, 110 plus one mm -hmm. by Hamner. Okay? Yeah. So, I mean. And, you know, what was important. How do you get. I mean, how does how does that validate the 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 season and the technique? I mean, pre spawn, offshore, jerk bait. I mean, that's just classic textbook bassin. Yeah, and, and what what I noticed watching and what was important for me to uh, that to pick up, um, and it's something that I that I that we do quite often is you saw a lot of guys with uh, a one ten. Uh, jerk bait or that that size jerk bait with a shallow lip, the regular lip on it. But then you also saw them pick up another rod that had uh, a 110 plus one. Plus one won the tournament. You know, um, you know, but if you read into a lot a lot of these guys, they would, you know, they would be able to to fish, pick up, pick up that rod, fish a bait in a certain water column and catch some fish and then pick up a, 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 the deeper diving one and get down to some fish that they couldn't reach. So it was important to have both of those baits rigged up. And, and um, Hamner was showing, you know, the two baits, and, and, and uh, there was a shallow lip and a deep lip in there, some, some of his stuff he was talking about. Yeah, but, you know, he pretty much did his damage <laughs> on that plus one. Now, you know, um, second place, Rasmussen, you know, he was throwing that Rapala up. Uh, Maverick. Where'd he come from? He won one of the opens. And yeah. Yeah. He was an yep. open winner. He's a uh, Sturgeon Bay walleye guide. Yeah. Who yeah. has taken up professional bass fishing in a big way. Yeah. Um, Just recently. Yeah. What a, what a, what a way to show, man. Just I think, recently. I mean, it goes to show you, you know, there's a lot of hammers out there that, that, um, you know, just giving the shot, they can really show you what they got, mm. you know? Yeah, so he he relied heavily on that on that dot on that Rapala Maverick, and then uh, Secure it finished fourth on a Strike King KVD jerkbait size two hundred. So the jerkbait definitely played, mm -hmm. and you know pre spawn in in decent watercolor we we live we live with a jerkbait. We're jerkbait. Yeah. I mean it's it's part of the you know the five prong attack. Is the jerk bait pre spawn? You throw a jerk bait. Mm -hmm. um, if the fish are relating to bait, you throw a jerk bait. If the mm -hmm. water clarity is decent, you throw a jerk bait. If the fish are suspended, you throw a jerk bait. Yeah. So these guys all threw a jerk bait. Yeah. And the jerk bait won the classic. Yeah. Uh, right. I I I re I really like the fact that it you know um, that the jerk bait played such a big role and I, and um, the other thing that we saw in that, <clears throat> well, like you said, right there, that the uh, strike King 200 size, a little different, mm -hmm. a little smaller, bit smaller, shallower, uh, shallower bait, you know, got a different size to it. I really liked that strike King 200. There's there, there's been times where we were fishing and that thing played a big role. They, they just wouldn't hit anything else. We went to that little shorter, little stouter, a little bit shorter bait, man. It really, really happened. It swims well. And you know another nice thing about that bait, George? It's got big hooks on it. It's a two-hook bait, and you're able to put or they, they're able to put a little bit bigger hook on it. So it doesn't have those little what size? Uh, I want to say they're threes. Mm. 
<laughs> I'm thinking they're fives. <laughs> I want to say they're threes. Yeah. I, I knew you were going to say that. Well, I mean, but there's a big, it, it's they're a, fives. It's a bigger hook. You just know, it. it's nice. It's like tearing a Band-Aid off. Just say it yeah. real fast. They're fives. Yeah. And, uh, you know, so there's bigger hooks. You can hook up on those fish. You don't lose them. Uh, it doesn't affect the, the the way the bait rolls, you know, and the way it suspends. And and um, I really like that bait. That's a nice, that's a real nice bait. Well, the other thing that was pretty peculiar about this, not peculiar, but different, was how they used line test to get different depths and behaviors out of their jerk baits. And if you watched, if you watched Hammer fish that jerk bait, I mean, I have never, ever watched anybody or been around anybody that fish a jerk bait like that. I mean, the rod movement. Yeah. It was almost as if he was working the bait with the handle of the reel. Like, yeah. you know, we, we always teach jerk bait fishing is you work the bait with the rod, the reel controls the slack. He was doing both, but he was doing this little choppy, you know, like cha cha cha, like just this. And, and, and he was looking at that scope a lot because he could see these fish reacting to the bait on these brush piles. And he was trying to line up on these brush piles. And every retrieve was unique. I mean, this guy, if you cataloged all his retrieves, it would be the greatest yeah. exhibition of jerkbait manipulation ever seen. I mean, I was I was taken away by his jerkbait and and he changed every cadence to every fish and he hooked them all. Yeah. I mean, he was dialed in. When you talk about getting dialed in, he was <laughs> dialed he, in. He really was. He really was. So yeah, that's your jerkbait. <clears throat> now, the other thing that that and I'm I'm really surprised you didn't mention this first. What was the very first thing we saw on day one? First person we saw getting it done. Jake. Spinnerbait. Oh, I saw a Jake. I mean, we were like. Hank Cherry hooking a giant on a, a Jake. Freaking spinnerbait. Now, you don't get any more. I yeah. mean, we, we, it was, I almost cried. <laughs> Well, it was you know, they said about the spinnerbait was going to play a big, a big role in this tournament. I know, but we've been looking at these little freaking minnow I, baits. Well, I know that was like and the, these spinning rods. Talk of the town, but we were also talking spinnerbaits too. Which I'm not saying was we were talking spinnerbaits in here. But the spinnerbait, and you know what I, you know what the overall trend was I picked out in spinnerbait, the single thumper. Not everybody, uh, but that was a trend. Let me break this down for you. Cobb. 19th place, three quarter ounce, single Colorado. Wow, that's what that's what that's that's what this time of the year is built for. Yeah. Um, Taku Ito, tenth mm. place, single thumper. Were they fishing it on the bottom, or were they fishing? They were slow rolling around the brush piles. Slow rolling. Yeah. Um. Jason Christie, the majority of his fish, spinnerbait. Mm -hmm. Rasmussen, second place, spinnerbait. What kind of blade do you combination do you think he had? Indiana. Single thumper. A single, single, single thumper. thumper. Indiana. I was hoping you were picking up on the trend I was laying down. Well, I don't know. I figured it was something different. Single thumper, Indiana. It was like that time I saw you order a uh, Manhattan. <laughs> like, I'm a Manhattan. You just you just was like single thumper, single thumper, Indiana. <laughs> yeah, throwing it out there. But Koyo Fujita, right? This guy's got like six transducer forward facing transducers on his boat. He's the he's the the forward facing whisperer Guru. of all time. He's throwing a spinner bait. He's throwing a jackal dune, double willow spinner bait, and I'm talking about putting them up in the house, right? Mm -hmm. So the spinner bait played a lot. I only talked about four anglers there. There was other anglers that relied heavily on the spinner bait. Yeah. Rasmussen, he can say what he wants to say, but the film does not lie. 
Yeah. He caught the majority of his fish on a spinnerbait, and he, you know, here's the deal about spinnerbait fishing this time of the year. It's a commitment. Okay? And we're going to talk about these commitments again tonight. And and what I mean by that, Mike, and I hope you understand me, mm -hmm. I know I'm only going to get X number of bites, maybe seven, six, seven, eight, maybe ten if I'm having a fantastic day, right? Mm -hmm. But I'm going to hook most of them, and I'm going to land most of them, and most of them are going to be better than average fish. Pre-spawn spinnerbait fish are better than average fish consistently you're getting a reaction strike from a uh let's just say an independent for a fish it's kind of like it's kind of like the mag draft and the swim baits you're not really like you're not really dealing with a school of fish you're not really dealing with that pre-spawn school that you find you're dealing with that that lone hunting mentality and you're capitalizing on that. Now, you're only going to come across so many of those in a day's time. Yeah. So you have to keep the bait in the hand. You know, these pros like to say we lock the bait in the hand. And you have to keep that bait in the hand. You have to commit to that bait. And Rasmussen finished second. Yeah. Lock a spinner bait in his hand. Mm -hmm. Yes, he did catch some fish in a jerk bait. We talked about that a minute ago. But let the truth be known that he caught the most of his fish on a single blade Colorado thumper. And he committed to it. And, and 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 what that meant was at one point on Sunday, I was watching him. Or sat a uh, day two. I'm sorry, not not day three. Day two. I was watching him and I thought, man, this is this is the turning point here where you can get behind to where you can't come back. And he stayed with that blade and he put that good quality fish in the boat. Took a while. Yeah. But one good quality fish makes up for a whole pile of average fish, right? Yeah. He's only weighing in five. Yeah. I mean, this ain't the. <clears throat> well, we talked about that can, in the past about, well, the, cla yeah. the classic, you go into it with a different mindset. You know, you go into it to win. That's the only reason you're there is to win the tournament. So, right. you know, you're going to fish for those bigger fish. And if, and if you can get a bite on that type of technique a, a single thumper spinnerbait slow roller that's a big fish technique you're going to spend a lot of time with it um you know that's the jerk bait they caught a couple big fish on that you're going to spend a lot of time with it because you that's what you're after and all you gotta do is get five bites well spinnerbait to me is a different pre-spawn bait than the jerk bait i'm going to catch a lot of fish on a jerk bait i'm going to catch a lot of fish on a jerk bait I'm going to catch a lot of average fish on a jerk bait. I'm going to catch my, I'm going to get my quality. Don't get me wrong, but I'm going to go through some numbers. I'm not going to catch a lot of fish on a spinner bait in pre spawn. I'm not. I am never going to catch a lot of fish on a spinner bait, but I'm going to catch the right fish. But I have to have these exact situations here to commit to it. I have to have a wave of fish that's coming up to spawn that I'm going to miss. I'm right ahead of them. And there's just enough of them filtering in that if I grind, I'm going to succeed. So I'm looking at, like, we had a full moon. We did not have stable weather. If this tournament would have presented itself with stable weather, this would have been a sight fishing tournament, and a guy like Drew Cook or Drew Benton would have been in the mix right up to the end. A guy like John Cox might have won it. But everything was off by that much. What uh, Were they throwing trailers on their spinnerbaits? Yes. All of them had a swim bait on of some sort. Oh, swim bait? Yep, of some sort. Um, you know, and what's interesting, you and I very rarely fish a bigger, tr a bigger trailer. But in pre-spawn, you want to. Yeah. Uh, I, I was going to say that you right. know, this time of year, slow rolling, I like to put a big old piece of plastic on the back. A little of dipper. Yeah. Yeah. Give it some body. Give it some thump. Give it some action. Give it some bigger profile. So this is the time of year to, to be looking at a trailer when you're slow rolling, when you're slow rolling. The other time we like to do it is in the fall, late fall, 
in a, into the early winter when they're when they're on those steep drop banks and you're rolling it down those steep drop banks. We like to put a trailer on. And they're on big bait. <clears throat> they're eating big bait. Big yeah, bait. When they switch over to that bigger bait. Uh, so you brought it up earlier. Near and dear to our heart. I mean, the spinner bait kind of, you know. That was awesome. You're I kinda, right. I mean, you know, I'm, you're, I'm not going right. to I can't you. believe you didn't say, I can't believe you didn't say what you're going to say next first. No, I'm saying it next. Yeah, I know. I can't believe you didn't say that. Well, first. I was just on Sunday. I was, I mean, I was locked into the spinner bait. Yeah. I was going to go fishing on Sunday and I started watching the spinner bait action. And the next thing I know, I forgot to go fishing. <laughs> it was out of control. I'm not lying to you. Yeah, yeah it's pretty fun. Well, it was fun. It was fun. You know, me. something we haven't seen play a lot. We have seen it play a little because of our new best friend that we love to follow from Maine, mm -hmm. the jig man. Yep. Williams. Barefoot. Oh, man, that guy is making me so cold. The second day when it was fishing went, a jig. Yeah. Yeah. And guess what? He wasn't alone. Well, day one, day one, the first fish I saw caught when I was able to watch uh watch it was hank cherry with uh he was catching him on a jig hank cherry loves a jig yeah he loves you a know? jig he, um, he 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 was doing really good and I now that he's I free from him. the uh from the death star he's he's throwing some different baits now yeah yeah he's throwing um, throwing all kinds of stuff what was the trailer that he was throwing on there did you see that thing i mean it was a chunk like Deep rib chunk, some kind of thing. You think it was a prototype of some sort, or no? Nah, it's a small company. He's promoting, you know. Oh, okay. But check I, this out. I like that chunk. Bryant Smith from California. Now, I don't know if you've been. F I've been following me some Brian Smith. I don't know if you have been. No. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. So when you drive across the country to fish bass tournaments, yeah, I want to see you do well. Yeah. Because it's a long way from the house. Yeah. California boy. I want to see you do well. And this guy, I mean, I think he originally came out of the Federation. Yeah. I mean, this freaking guy he's is a, a beast. He's a hammer. I love him. I am a Bryant Smith fan. You always see him in the in the top. I mean, always. he's always up. Always. In the, he's in the mix all the time. 13th place. And he did a lot of his work with a jig. He was throwing that Strike King compact tungsten jig. Boy, is that a nice jig. Yeah, I mean, they should just call it the Strike King Kitek jig. Yeah, it's a nice jig. It really I mean, is. I didn't really mean to say that out loud, but, you know. Yeah. I'm just saying, you know, yeah. as a free agent out there in the world, I can speak my mind. Yeah. Um, Great guy to watch. You know, putting the jig on the map, but not alone. I mean, Koyo Fujita, Mr. Six Transducer, like, mm -hmm. you know, I got him on Transducer 1. I got him on Panorama. I got him over here. I'm going to hit him on a crossing pattern. No. Yeah. He didn't need him. Yeah. He was flipping his jig, 11th place jig and a spinnerbait. Where'd our Brian, Brian Smith end up? Brian Schmidt? Yeah. Uh, I want to say like 20. Yeah. He was in a top 10 there for a while. 20, 20. I think after day two, he was like top 10. 21 to 23. Yeah, I think he was in 10th place after day two. And he, well, was, he was catching some fish. He was jigs. pitching a missile D-bomb. Yeah. And he was actually one of the very few guys that I watched Nico rigging. Yeah. But. That's part of his DNA. Yeah. And you got to you got to dance with the one that brung you, you know what I mean? And he and he did, had a fantastic tournament. Yeah. Yeah, well, you know, I mean, come on. Yeah. That's our guy. We love to see where he does. But this Brian Smith guy with this with this striking jig and then Koyo Fujita with his jig and then this uh Securat fourth place with a Denny Brower structure jig. I mean, this Securat kid well, I mean, jerk bait, structure jig. Come on. <clears throat> that Denny Brower structure jig is a badass jig. It's a hybrid. It's a total hybrid. Yeah. I mean, it is. I don't know if you guys ever seen that jig. It's totally different. It's a it's a it's made to go through structure and it, and, and, it, and it and it does it really, really well. 
we have a couple guys fishing them and they flip trees on this one lake we know and they bought they that's what they use they use the denny brower structure jig they've been through every kind of jig pot known to man and that's the best one to go through that stuff real pointy nose hook eye comes right out straight out the nose george almost like a swim jig it's a nice jig it's a real nice jig um yeah spin plus it eggs. has denny brower's name on it which is freaking badass yeah i mean if if you don't respect Danny Brower's jig fishing game, yeah, sign off. Yep. See ya. What? So jerks, jigs, spinner baits. Hank Cherry, you mentioned him. He finished eighth. I was so excited for him. Could you, you imagine know, if he won that thing? You were talking about his jig. Yeah. He did a lot of his damage on a jackhammer. Yeah, I caught him. I saw him uh, like almost every time I looked up, he was catching the first day on jigs. Caught a lot of smaller fish too. Well, yeah, he, he was catching them on jigs. Well, the jackhammers what got him home. <clears throat> I think he really came around to that. Yep. You know, in his in his in his previous year, it was the um, unnamed bladed jig. Mm -hmm. But now that he's out in the world, mm -hmm. it's jackhammer. Yeah. And you know, we like Hank Cherry a lot. Yeah, good guy. Uh, so back to back classic winner. You just can't say that to just anybody. No. Nah. Well. You can say it to Jordan Lee. Yeah. Who else? I don't know. But I'm just saying you Van can. Dam? I don't know. Back to back. I'm just saying you can say it to Jordan Lee. Yeah, there ain't many of them. Yeah. Now, something else we haven't seen in a while. And you know what? There was someone on a podcast the other day that said that the forward facing. I mean, this guy was just just throwing up on forward facing sonar. <sighs> And he's like, the crankbait sales Clickbaiter. are down. Well, you know what? As, as somebody who's in the fishing tackle industry pretty deeply, um, that's not true. What? What did what, what, you just say? Oh, you're not paying attention? Well, I, I, I no, I was kind of lost between mm. you, you and... That's so disappointing. I do, um, I do kind of wonder. So I was listening to a podcast the other day, and this gentleman was talking about um, the forward facing. You know, he was just basically forward facing vomiting. Yeah. And uh, said crankbait sales are down. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So I'm going to just there say. There were some crankbaiters catching them on crankbaits in that tournament. Oh, really? Yeah. How about uh, Brandon Palinick? Yeah. 22nd place. Yeah. Cranking, I eat. That's all he did. Mm -hmm. He's a spinner bait. I mean, he's a swim bait guy, but he threw some mega bass. You know, he threw a super, uh, uh, super Z2 and a sonic side, uh, crankbait, committed to it, caught some beautiful fish. Um, Welcher, the reigning angler of the year, mm -hmm. number five shad wrap. Ah, come on. Wow. Number five shad wrap. Brian Smith. Did we just not just have a big Bryant Smith love festival? Yeah. Try a 3X day. Mm, In that. red. Red. Wow. And then uh, how about this Huff, this Cody Huff from Missouri? Mm -hmm. Like when, when you get high praise from Rick Clun mm -hmm. as a superstar in the making, mm -hmm. um, yeah, OG Tiny Four Rapala flat side. Sat there and watched that guy throw at a rock. Or no, one little stick coming into the water. He threw at that thing 10 or 12 times. And on the 13th time, he caught it like a three-pounder. And Rick Clun was watching him at the at the time. And he started talking about this, this kid, you know. And he said, he, and he was like, see, now that kid knows. And and you watch, he'll stay there, and he and he stayed there. He kept throwing at that stick, throwing at that stick, throwing. And it was maybe they were talking about something. And he's boom, he catches another one off that same damn stick. He catches another, one and he said, "Now see, this kid understands that that's a spot where there's there's fish there, and they're all the same. There's all the same size fish, and they're bigger fish, and they're just gonna they're gonna be right there. They're at that one little spot right there, and and for whatever reason." There'll be three or four of them there. You watch. He'll stay there for a little bit longer. Yeah. And he caught. He was there for the longest time. And I kept watching. Remember, I kept yelling, man, this freaking yeah. dude keeps throwing at the same stick. And boom, he'd catch one. Yeah. 
Now, I think he caught three off of that thing, and Rick Clem was going off the off the deep end. It was that. impressive. Yeah, it, it was, was definitely impressive. It was very, very cool. Yep, very cool. Well, I mean, there's, there's, there's what, and I only, I only highlighted four anglers in the top twenty-two on crankbait. So you know, crankbait sales are not going down. Crankbait selections are going up. Crankbait use is up. Yeah. So no, don't fabricate stats to prove a point that's not valid. We don't want that. Mm -mm. If you have a valid point, make it and we'll discuss it. We'll chop it up. We'll see both sides of the story, but don't just come out there and just start spouting off like that because I'm going to tell you right now, it's not right. Uh, kind of know a little bit about this well you know the thing is is like it it's very trendy crankbaits are very trendy you know they're up and down we're we're like crazy up on crankbait sales here because the crankbait bite around at least in our area is going nuts it's going crazy well, and people I, are going absolutely ape I, on I, it. I took notice we shipped a ton of freaking crankbaits in the last two weeks so apparently yeah. it's not just this area no i'm saying that our region our whole region yeah. uh, at least in our region we know uh, with with uh, not only sales, but we also know with the usage well, that the crankbait bite the last couple of years has been increasing like this crazy. This is just an example of like negative talk to generate a buzz yeah. in bait. the Clickbait. overcrowded podcast world. Yeah. And you know what? Yeah. Don't say it if it's not right. And yeah. to make a statement like that, you got to reach out and do some research. Mm -hmm. Crankbait sales are not down. In fact, in certain areas such as this one, they're up. Now, is that where the main uh, interest in talk has been? No. No. But guess what? It was here. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. This tournament was a breath of fresh air, and the crankbait played, and it makes sense. Well, Crankbaits and pre-spawn go together. What do you, I mean, you know, now they're going down to Florida, and you're not going to see much of the crankbait thing happening. Uh, or is that a big crank, oh, crankbaiting down there? Um, uh, I'm going to give you a couple of seconds here to retract your statement. Well, I, unless address uh, the situation. I mean, rattle traps. Thank you. Lipless. Rat rattle trap. Lipless. Crankbait. Yeah. Yeah. Lipless. I could see lipless I mean, being. Spro, Ruku Shad. Yeah. Uh, Booyah. But, but like the crankbaits, like these guys are talking about, there's not going to be a whole lot of that. They throw on. a little bit of square bill down there. Yeah, yeah. Remember when uh, the very first ever Bass Pro Tour event, Jordan Lee like completely blew the field out of the water with long range 110 millimeter cannon fire, <laughs> lipless and square bill in the middle of the lake on brush piles. Mm -hmm. And people said, I thought you fished grass in Florida. Mm -hmm. Well, you do, unless they're on the wood. Didn't you know? um, uh, John Cruz win a tournament down there fishing brush piles? Yeah, but he wasn't cranking. No, but I know he was throwing He, his... was, he was chatter wagoning, and, and uh, he was uh, throwing his missile. Shaky, uh, shaky head. Missile worm. Yeah, his magic. Yeah. And he was doing some other missile things, but <clears throat> he caught, I saw him catch a super tanker on a chatterbait. Mm. I mean, it was awesome, dude. But he was offshore structure. I also fishing. saw him lose a big one on the chatterbait and, uh, you know, had like a bleeding ulcer over that. Yeah. But yeah. So, circling back around here, Mike, and you know, in my new life, you know, I've become quite the <clears throat> swim bait guy. You know, I've been throwing them now for a year. Quite possibly the best swim bait fisherman I ever met. Yeah, I believe that. Huh? I believe what are you that. saying? Go ahead. Go ahead. Say it. I mean, go ahead. You... I mean, you know, racked up multiple wins on multiple circuits with them. <laughs> I, I... I'm just having fun. I will tell you this, that the last year uh, we've had a lot of fun throwing those things, you know, swim baiting. Well, guess what happened at the Bass Masters Classic? 
which shouldn't be that hard to understand right now after we just went over jerk baits, chatter baits, jigs, spinner baits, crank baits, power, 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 power. Mm -hmm. Bam! Big power. Yeah. Mag drafts, coal sheds. Mm. Glides didn't have it. Mm -hmm. Glide the glide didn't have it. It was a mag draft coal shed, which is again pre spawn weaponry of the highest level. The six inch mag draft played a little bit with an eastern father gill, but that eight inch mag draft was getting it done. Wow. Okay. Who was throwing those damn things? People that wanted to catch big fish. Yeah. Matt Robertson was throwing to coal shed in both eight inch and six inch. Yeah, I saw that. That's okay. true. You're right. Yep. That is a killer pre spawn yeah. bait, and it played big time. Yeah. So the thing about the Bassmasters Classic is it has made legends in the tackle industry. The Hank Parker Classic spinnerbait, mm -hmm. which was actually a hog collar. Mm hmm. Um, and produced you know, by man's afterwards. Right. Yeah. And, you know, go on and on and on. Right. Um, this, this, this classic mega bass held some ground in this classic. I mean, mag drafts vision, one ten plus ones strike King held some ground in this classic. I mean, Denny Brower structured jig. Custom tungsten compact jig, jerkbait 200, 3XD. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, you know, there yeah. were some players it, in this classic. Yep. Yeah. Right? Yep. Yeah. Greenfish tackle with their jig and their spinner bait. I mean, this was not like a one secret bait like the year that uh, Mark Davis won on High Rock and, and he attributed his win to the. Uh, Excalibur crankbait, right? It wasn't like that. So, yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know. I think that's pretty much my notes, my breakdown, my rundown, and your at additions to that. Yeah. Well, I was a. It was a. It was a good turn. I mean, congratulations to. Uh, um, Hamner for winning that tournament. I mean, you know, hats off to him. Uh, very, did it very, very professionally. Um, but he was at the end, he was as giddy as they get and as excited as you get and, um, was super, super, um, nervous as hell coming in on that boat ride at the end of the day. <laughs> He was really, really nervous, and you know, rightfully so. I mean, you got you're on the cusp of winning a, 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 the the tournament that everybody's been dreaming of winning, and um, you're going to get a little nervous. You're going to get a little itchy. I really liked the way he handled himself. He did. There was some raw emotion there. Yeah, yeah. There was some seasoned caginess. Yep. There was managing sponsors. Um, you know, by not necessarily catching fish on their baits, which yeah. happens, you you know, it's a classic yeah. you're fishing to win. Yeah. You know, yeah, shit happens. Yeah. And sponsors stick by you because of that. Cause you're honest. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, all in all the classic was spectacular. Freaking awesome. I mean, it, it showcased bass fishing at the absolute highest level. The outdoor show was mobbed with people. Um, it was just a first-class event. The blast-offs in the morning, the, the talent that they have working in that organization is incredible. So The organization of the tournament is, is amazing, how, it's they, over the top, how, how they keep it organized. I mean, there was they were saying there was several, well, thousand or so people at blast-off every morning. Yeah. And the weather was suck. And um, you know, to be able to to control all that and get all the boats launched and have everybody safe, they do a tremendous, tremendous job with that. And and um, I don't even know how they do it. I mean, I don't know how many people were at that classic, but it was huge, absolutely immense. 
So, you know, like everything else in the sporting world, um, the stakes are getting higher. Sometimes it's it's self-inflicted, self-imposed. You know, you get caught up in your own world. Mm -hmm. Not that that's, not that we're judging, because we've been there. Mm -hmm. You get wrapped up in your world. You are so driven by what you're doing. You're... You're living your dream that you make questionable decisions. And, you know, we've talked about this on the water. Some of the nicest people in the whole world in the fishing industry, you know, you'll have some situations here and there by the otherwise mild-mannered Clark Kent who turns into a demon over certain circumstances on the water. And, you know, we had a couple of these that made the news here. Um with some very well-known footage of boats running over boats in no wake canals because they were on pad breaking the rules breaking the law not not preaching not not judging just saying it's no wake you're on pad you get to a confined entrance you get a little nervous you chop the throttle the guy behind you runs you over okay somebody got hurt that's a that is an indication of a decision that was made by otherwise awesome fishermen. How many times have I said that? Oh, that's that's why that's why I that's why you I talk, you talk to guys and in, in, you know and you see them a lot. Your friend and you know, you can be friends with them. That's why and, I referenced and, it. Yeah, and you you're talking to them and they're the greatest guys, shirt off your back kind of thing and. I mean, I'm not trying to they hit the water and you lose your freaking mind. I'm not trying to like judge people here. I'm no. just saying I, I have two examples of, you know, otherwise people that I I I think were, you know, great people. And we, we, you know, decisions. You know, problem is in today's day and age, everything is on film. Mm -hmm. Everything is being captured. You're never alone. So this stuff always happened. Now we just see it all. You know, and I'm going to reference a pro here that I am a massive fan of. Matter of fact, one of my best fishing buddies, one of my best friends, this is his man that he follows. And Brian knew. And he just got DQ'd from an open for... I, I just want to say getting caught up in a, in a situation that was not intentional. But, you know, there's so much pressure. There's so much on the line. There's so much drive behind all of us. And, you know, it was misconstrued to a certain extent, but whatever. It happened. Um. So, you know, just... Remember, somebody is always watching. Not We don't have to talk to you about making good decisions. You're all good people. You make good decisions. But once in a while, we all, I'll be honest with you, when I was hardcore tournament fishing, I'm not going to lie to you. I've probably run more than one no wake. Okay? That's cheating. Mm. And I've done it. Um, you know, situations from horrible storms coming in where I could have hunkered down and rode it out and been late and DQ'd my catch or drop the freaking hammer and get out of town and not get caught in the storm and not be late. Bad decision on my part. Guess what? No cameras rolling. Okay. Not lying. True, true statement happened. Well, um, I'm going to report you. Go ahead. What, what do they call that? File a uh, grievance. I think Protest. there's a statute of limitations on um, no wake zones. Okay. <laughs> I'm just saying. Um, they know that side of you. I well, didn't know you were such I mean, an outlaw. The storm, you know. Um, that rock, I'll tell you how bad that storm was. And and I remember a couple things about about that tournament. When I got back to the boat ramp, first of all, on the way to the boat ramp, my co angler was about a four foot. 10, uh, five foot tall woman. And I, I seen her three feet off the chair 
about 50 times on that run. And when I got back into the weigh-in, uh, I didn't realize this at the time, but as I was cleaning my boat up for the next day, um, her husband came over, <laughs> and he was he was a big man. And I'm like, oh, man, this is going to be bad. And he said, you know, I just wanted to thank you. My wife said you, you took really good care of her and gave her a, an awesome ride back. And I'm thinking, wow. Uh, okay. Um, I mean, I run a Skeeter, so, I mean, that's to be expected. But I got to tell you, <laughs> my power poles were laying on the cowling of my motor, which was all dinged up from that. And I had three rods broken in the rod locker. Now, you'd be hitting some shit when you're breaking rods in the rod locker. Well, um, yeah. You know. So, you know, moral of the story, should I have done that or not? I don't know. Should Brian New have done what he did or not? I don't know. I'm not judging Brian New. Brian New explained himself in a way that said, you know, he thought he was doing all right. But... He also thought he might have been doing something wrong. Whatever. This is, we're not judging. All we're saying is here's some incidents that happened resulting in DQs and, in the case of the Toyota Series Hurt guys, people, yeah. at least a one year ban and a guy getting cut up. So, you know what? Uh, don't take this as uh, judgment. It's just I always like a nice hand grenade at the end of the night. And I kind of, yeah. Been reading a little bit on this stuff and Yeah, I read uh, you know. Yeah. I mean I read into uh Brian New Brian News um statement he put out and you know he he uh made a terrible mistake and he admits it and and um that's stand up. And and that's that's the first thing, you know. Um and you know, taking the punishment is the second thing and, and that's what it is. He got DQ'd, he's out. And um uh, there's been a lot of guys over the years who've been DQ'd for things that they they just they they'll say it was just a loss of of uh, of of thought for a, a brief moment, and they made a really bad decision for a brief second, and um, I mean, Brandon Palnick DQ'd on a tournament, uh, yeah, because uh, of a uh, G man because of an incredibly ridiculous yeah. rule. Well, he fished out of state. But yeah, like half his boat. Yeah, he was out of state. I know, but it was ridiculous. I know, but that's what happened. And uh uh Kevin Van Dam DQ'd in a tournament. I mean, you know. Um G Man DQ'd in yeah. a tournament. These are all big names and they learn from their mistakes and it happens and so split session split, split second yeah. decision. I mean, yeah. I know in my case, yeah, I'm idling out. This storm was ugly, and I'm like, you know what? Uh, it was selfish because I didn't want to be late, but I used the storm as an excuse. But I I let the big old 250 eat, man. We we got out of that no wake zone in record time. I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> well, there was, and, and not to mention, no one else was out. But that doesn't make it right. I'm just it. saying. I got caught up in the moment. Should turn yourself in when you got back. Yeah, I should have. Yeah, uh, make kind of make might might you might construe that as cheating. Yeah, I probably should have, but I didn't. Um, you know. Have you done it since then? Not in a tournament. Yeah. Oh, got up off a tournament. Yeah. I mean, what are what what is up with you? I went rogue. You are. You are. I mean, this is a side of you that I, I don't know, man. I didn't know you were you were such an outlaw. I mean, you know, I I listen to a lot of Toby Keith and you know, <laughs> shit's going down. I mean, I'm running over top of dams now and Yeah. Fucking I mean breaking some laws. You are. You're freaking going crazy, bro. But I'm not doing it in tournaments. Doesn't matter. You're still breaking the law. Huh? Well, because guess what? You're doing it out of tournaments. Then when you're in a tournament and you and you're running and you say, "Well, I can't run over that dam," and you and you're gonna say, well, "I did it hundred times." What dam? Nobody's looking right over the dam. I would never do something like that. Oh yeah, right. Um, I think this conversation has strayed off the path of <laughs> truth and has gone somewhere sideways. Wow, um, it's good. It's good to kind of 
bring you know bringing us to light all, uh, every now and again so we can all just have it in the back of our head so that when we do get to that situation just maybe you remember the conversations that you heard on tackle shop live and it might deter you well i mean we don't want from doing that yeah we're not and this is not preaching this is talking this is just the end no, of the night no no hand grenade no absolutely not but it, i will say this um i i just admitted it to you i did it so you know i'm sorry i did it now all these years later but you know what hopefully you don't yeah right um i like to get back to the way in it with one minute to spare and most of you do henry church churchill got it right put an ankle bracelet on him <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah oh man yeah. i want to have to i'm gonna have to do that well yeah. I have to put, I'm going to put alarms on everything now. Now I got to get, now I got to get those package things where you put on the packages that when you walk out at the sirens start going off. Cause you, uh, who knows what you're walking out with? Well, you're walking out with all kinds all of stuff. I can tell you, well, they don't know. Some things went down on the Mississippi river a while ago that were. Not <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That involved running boats. Yeah. Through in the woods around well, the dam and over dams. Yeah, and well, around dams, well, and well, through the woods, yeah, and across a guy's cornfield. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you got reprimanded for that. I can't believe they didn't DQ anybody on that. I mean, we weren't really cheating. There was water there. The boats floated. Yeah, well, especially if you were on plane. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I'm just saying, there was that one time. Yeah, um, you got in trouble the first time for going over the dam. So the second day, you went into the woods. I did go over the dam yeah. and I did go through the woods. Yeah. But there's been other instances. Yeah. Involving questionable boat operation. Yeah. But it was a safety concern. So let's just say I don't think Brian knew was making a conscious decision to break laws. I don't think no. Anything like that entered his mind. I think it happened. Well, he consciously and he kind of spoke about it. He yeah, kind of spoke about he consciously it. Consciously did something that he didn't think was a lawbreaker, but he should have done it anyway. Right. And, and and I and and I appreciate the fact that he said that. Yeah. And 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 then and the other thing that I like that he said down at the end of his of his thing was uh I I I'm definitely going to learn from this and it will never ever happen again. All right. Enough said. Yeah. So, one last thing I'd like to bring up to all of our fine listeners. First of all, uh, we've been doing this for a long time, and we really appreciate you all following on. And a lot of you are regulars, and a lot of you are new tonight. And we are really appreciate both categories um, of you tremendously. We really do. Because without you and your time, we don't exist. Yeah. Um, and, and, and this is a, something that started out as a way to survive through the unforeseen elements of COVID and ended up being a fun and effective promotional tool for us. It's fun and it's effective. Okay. And we have really Not only that, but it's, it, you know, it's good for everybody. Yeah, we have, it's, um, it's, it's a, it's, it's a community. It's fun. A, exactly. A what community that is. has formed. That's exactly what it is. Um, but here's the deal. Make sure you're getting emails from us. Okay. So go on the website, sign up for an email, tell your friends to sign up for an email. Cause we're getting ready to start with our, some of our post show season specials. And I'm going to tell you right now, the first four specials that are going out mm. on the emailer, mm. they're going to be exciting. And you may or may not want to miss them. Yeah. Okay. Um, and I'd like to thank everybody for jumping in. Uh, I see if, I see some 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 long term names on here. Mike, what are you? I mean, I'm I'm looking at oh, man. I'm looking are, at Joseph Cascarino. Yeah, these guys are OGs, man. We got we, you know, that's the thing. We got we got a lot of people that have been on since the original broadcast, and we see you guys and we know you guys. Got some new people on here. Uh we got 
new people all the time, and that's great. And appreciate you. Uh, I'm seeing Matthew Weimer. I'm seeing John Wyrick. I'm seeing yeah. Bridget Kirsten Allen. Yeah. Mike Reinhold. Mike Reinhold. Dale well, Fogel. Day one kind of Don Roeder. Don Roeder, uh, day one. And I saw a bunch of names on here tonight that were new. Yeah. And you know what? We thank you all. We do. Uh, next week's show, um, next Thursday, same, same, same place, same time. Next week's show, we are efforting a very interesting guest for the show. Mm. And we will be discussing some of the trends in, um, Bass fishing techniques for pre-spawn with you then as well. Uh, so next Thursday, 7 o'clock. Yep. Bites on right now. popcorn. Everybody go fishing for between now and next Thursday. Make sure you go fishing. The bite is on every year. And, um, you know, have fun with that. Go out and catch some big ones. This is it. This is the time of the year where you get that PB. So every minute counts. If you get the time, get out there and do it. And until next time, we'll see you on the next Tackle Shop Live. Day. Right there, you took my breath away. A young and pretty, you was it just a dream? The next day, you called me up. You told me I'm your little buttercup. You came over and you fell into my arms. Well, I know what I feel. Please tell me your love is real.